Hi guys, welcome back. So it's getting quite exciting. So it is a Friday afternoon today and I have exactly a week until the TIFF, until this car goes in for its inspection. And there's a couple of things that I've got to finish off. As you saw from the last video, I've done all the body work uh, and so on, except for finishing off that small patch that I filled with the body filler. So that's one of the points I've got to address. What I wanted to do was rather than respray anything, I was just going to daub some um, of the marine blue paint, which I have in a tin over there, just literally finely on those um, repaired areas, because I don't want to set about respraying any of the panels. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the crankcase ventilation system. Uh, it was pretty much non-existent on this car previously. So uh, it was when I drove it, when I was uh, you know, 17, I think I drove it for uh, 17, 18, how, how long for? 95 to 98, I think I, I drove it for, uh, or two. So a good couple of years. And it had the ventilation system on there with the uh, Zenith carburetor. But as I say, when it passed over to my parents after that time, uh, they had the Weber car put on it and the garage removed the uh, crankcase ventilation system. That includes the sieve at the top here, like the one-way valve, which sits in front of the carburetor and the pipe which is coincidentally quite difficult to find, and when you do find them, they're quite expensive, that goes round to the filler cap. And all of the rubber hoses uh, that connect that system are all specialist rubber hoses. They're not just standard hose, which you can cut off a length. They're formed from one diameter at the outset of the hose to a wider diameter at the, at the end of it. So they're all um, special part numbers. So anyway, I have made the pipe myself. I bought a length of uh, aluminium pipe as you saw in the other video and I've managed to bend that around the engine. It doesn't follow the exact same route as the original one does um, but until I can source a, uh, an original one, if I really need to, then that will be fine. So I haven't quite finished it now because I was waiting on the delivery of this uh, valve, the crankcase ventilation valve, and it has now arrived. So it arrived last night. I I sent a, an upload an image of it arriving. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through it today and make sure all the, the parts to it are there because it consists of a, a, a membrane and a spring. So I've looked through the holes without taking it apart because it's a bit dirty last night at my home uh, and it has the spring at least, but I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna take it apart and clean it up. So I'm just gonna do that on video. I got the Haynes manual out as well um, and just had a look at it in, in there and it, it describes it pretty clearly uh, on the earlier models, which is this one. It has this uh, one-way valve and the, uh, the hose set up, but on the later, slightly later models, I believe it had a, um, it, it did away with that and had a, uh, a one-way valve directly on top of the uh, oil filler neck. Uh, so anyway, let me take this out. And it's come pretty much complete as well, like I was saying before about those tubes. You can see on this one's a perfect example. It's even got the original clips. It's a smaller diameter there than it is on there. And you can see it there. These are still pretty flexible, so I will most likely reuse those but not these, these uh, clips because it has to be an airtight system and I won't manage it with those clips anymore. So I'll, I'll use some more modern clips on that. So that is that. And this is the, the sieve itself or, or the, the valve itself. So as you can see, it's just come directly off a, off a uh, I think it was a Series 2A engine he took it off. I've got a supplier in, uh, in Northern Germany who has a huge amount of Land Rover bits. Uh, some of which are, are uh, becoming for, uh, dip, more and more difficult to find, this being one of them, believe it or not. Uh, John Craddock has these, uh, I think he has three being listed at the moment. He has uh, three original ones, and I think they cost about £65, pounds, uh, which is you know, pretty close to €65 Euros or $65. Dollars. Uh, so if any of you need one, and it's worth getting one soon, because they are running out. Anyway, so that's also come with the, um, the bracket there, which is really good. So yeah, I'm gonna get some tools and I am going to take that apart. Seems to have something strange going on in there. There's a, I think maybe somebody else has put like a, a, uh, 
you know, another piece of uh, plastic, uh, rubber in there just to make the connection a bit more, a bit more uh, secure. But um, let's see, I'll start taking it apart and have a look. So where is my trusty... This spanner, I tell you, is the most handy spanner that I have in my toolbox for this car. It's an imperial uh, spanner, so it's 7 sixteenths and a half inch, and it fits pr pretty much everything on this car, which is really, really useful. So anyway, and <laughs> it fits that as well, perfect. I think this entire car has been designed around 7 sixteenths and half inch nuts and bolts. Fantastic. I don't know about you guys, but I spend most of my time, well, not most of my time, but a huge amount of my time actually searching for tools. It's mad. Even when you've had them in your hand, you put them down and then you end up putting them down just like that. And then you're standing here and you can't sit, and you just search forever. So it's all part of the fun. It'd be interesting at the end of the, the restoration to, to, to know how much time I actually spent searching for tools. I bet it's a depressingly huge amount of time, but uh, I'm sure it's the same for oops, everybody else. I don't usually video these sorts of uh, exercises, uh, you, know, you know, without doing some kind of a time lapse, but I thought because it's one of the last parts that's, that's missing on this car, I thought I'd do it. Um, so I'm gonna have to move that camera because I'm bending over this table and it is hurting my back for me. So we're gonna change that and do it like that. I've just made this table, uh, so it's quite nice to have a clean surface. So you can see that's the elbow, which I've actually got one on my car, so that is going to be a spare, which is quite handy. Um, but that is the, the one-way valve. And that's the bracket, and that's that. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so the spring, whoops. Yes, all right, so that looks like it's just been taken off a running engine or, or a working system, because look, it's all, all oily in there. Don't know if it's supposed to be that oily, but this is, these are all the parts, so that's good. So this is the diaphragm, which looks to be in all right condition. I know they usually say to replace them, and I'm sure I will at some point, but that has, it looks like it works, you know, there's oil on the inside of it and there's nothing where it pushes against the ring here. So I think that's probably working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set that to one side because I don't think you should probably get any brake clean or anything along those lines on this uh, membrane. So I'm just gonna clean that up with, I would say warm soapy water, but I've got, got no running warm water in my garage or let alone any running water in my garage. It's the one thing I'm missing really. But I'm just gonna clean that up with some soapy water. I'll put that to one side and I'll clean this up with some brake clean. Okay. Well, that's coming up quite nicely, actually. 
It's funny, brake clean over here, it sort of fluctuates in price drastically. You can go to Hornbach, where I got this from, and it was, the other day, it was seven euros for uh, two liter, two liters, yeah, so four of these, a box of four, it was seven euros 50. And I went there, when was it, day before yesterday, and it's gone up to 750 per canister. So I don't know, it obviously follows the, uh, the fuel price, fuel prices so but it's amazing how much it fluctuates right that is already looking pretty good i mean obviously it's just for aesthetic reasons i'm cleaning this but obviously on the inside i think you have to clean it to, to help it work better but all it is is a one-way valve Hope this isn't going on my camera. Right. Okay, so without getting the metal polish out, that is looking pretty good, I would say. Just cleaning that up. Maybe give it a bit more up there. Could do some pipe cleaners, actually. But that looks fine. So that's the, that's the first part of it. could actually do with plating. Um, I have ordered a nickel diode actually. I was watching, I don't know if you know this guy, but uh, Jeffrey Croker, he's also rebuilding a, a Land Rover at the moment uh, on YouTube. And I've subscribed to him from the beginning of the project and he does a quite a, a good step-by-step -step guide of how to plate metal. And I followed his advice and I've ordered the anode Yet to buy the vinegar. Don't know if I'm going to go so far as to buy the hydrochloric acid. Um, but this would be perfect. If I had that set up, then I could replate this. And that would look great because this is actually uh, corroding on here. It's corrosion. It's not dirt. Let me get rid of that. So when I've got that set up, actually, I will most likely clean this up again and plate it. Don't know if you can see that there, but there it is. Look, Smith's S. Smith and Sons England Limited. Patent pending, patent pending. Look at that, perfect. It is getting there. Okay, so I could clearly get it a lot better than that, but that is getting there. It's looking pretty good. Do the edges as well, because actually what it's, it's got a bit, a bit crusty and all that crustiness will prevent the, uh, the membrane from sealing against the body of the valve. So just give that a clean up there. a lot better. 
Okay, so that's that. Let me have a look at this. Give the spring a bit of a clean. Not much you can do with that. Give this a bit of a clean as well. looking a lot better so let's put that there and what I'll do now give that a clean very carefully obviously where's the, where's the soapy water what have I done with that ah you see looking for there it is not that soapy, let me put some more soap in it, or let me just get the fit and put it straight onto there, it's probably what I should have done in the first place actually, oops, Parts cleaner, that would be good as well. I guess people with set up workshops and lots of money can afford all of these, these parts to do a restoration properly and, well not properly, but efficiently. I think that's what it gets, comes down to is efficiency. You know, if you've got all of the, the right tools and the space to do a, a restoration project, then it's clearly gonna go a lot quicker than if you don't have those things or if you, if you build if you build up those, hmm, you no, know, that's supposed to come off there, maybe it is. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't come off there. I think it's just pressure that keeps it on. All right. That's. But yeah, that's 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 the way I started. I mean, I was really lucky that where where I grew up and where my my parents still lived at the time and, and still live now, or at least my mum, um, I had. Uh, or have a huge amount of space there. So I was able just to find the uh, one of the most empty uh, barns that we had and um, and cleared it out, as you saw in the, the first video, and used that, but uh, but that was, it's just lucky really. You know, p no normally people don't have that sort of, a sp sort of space and end up doing the restoration in double garages, single garages, or literally just under a tarpaulin in the, in the front or back garden. But you've got to do what you've got to do. So this is really quite crusty, actually. I dare say this hasn't been cleaned for a very long time. I'm just having to be a bit careful here because I don't want to damage this thing. You can see the imprints, all of the dirt and the crustiness is made on this membrane. But it is getting a bit better. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Still got a bit more to come off there. But that, I think, will do it. A bit more there, maybe. Scotch Bright probably isn't the right thing to be using. He says, keep keeping on using it. Okay, so that is looking all right. I'm just gonna dry all those bits off, get all this crap out of the way. Good. Time to put it all back together. 
Oh, I'll clean this up as well. A bit of a blast. Okay, so what I might do is just give this a bit of a, a thin film of, of, of oil. I've got some oil over there, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, so that goes in there. Ah, I'm there like that then. Make sure it fits in there. So I don't know if this cross means anything. Maybe. Anyway. There we go, that's it. Valve back together. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is incredibly windy outside. It's quite sunny, but it's very windy, which is why I've got the door closed today. So, clips off. And I know they're not as nice or as cool as the originals, but Obviously, I'll reuse the originals when I get some new pipe, but I'm just going to have to use these sort of clips, and I think it's going to be those, those two there. That'll do that. Good. Okay, so that's that. Now it's time to put it onto the car. Okay, so... As you saw from the last video, this is the breather pipe that I made up, which goes in just down there and snakes around the front of the engine there and will come up to meet the breather valve just here. So what I'll do is let me put a cap on that for safety and I will put that, that breather valve in. So this is where it goes, in there, like that, and then that will point round there, and then meet up with, with that breather pipe there. Okay, so I've just taken the, the tube off because I've obviously got a, this is actually too long. So this has to be cut to about there and this tube that comes past this bracket here has to snake up here and then like do an S and then poke outwards, sort of kick outwards in line with this. So what I've done is I've taken it off. This is my pre-bent pipe, which goes like that around the engine and where I've made the mark there 
this is where it needs to bend up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just shaping this pipe, as I mentioned to you before, and the way I'm doing that is, I'm using the blowtorch to heat up the areas that I'm bending. I'm bending it round a, a, a quite a, a small stake, uh, but what I've done to, to prevent the pipe from collapsing in on itself is to pack this entirely full of sand. So this tube is completely full of sand, and it seems to work quite well. And wherever it sort of, you know, if ever it sort of um, collapses a little bit, then just heat it up again, put it on its side and tap it, tap it out again. But it seems to be working pretty well. But this bend here is gonna be actually pretty tight. So I'll see how it, how it gets on. Okay, so that, I haven't measured it yet, but that seems to be quite a nice little bend there and it hasn't collapsed the pipe in any way. I'm just gonna go and check now whether that's in line. So it's a bit skew with, it's pointing up a little bit, but um, if you imagine, well, maybe it does, maybe it does just point up there a little bit. Maybe I should have put another bend in there somewhere, like a little wave. Anyway, maybe I'll do that still. Uh, but that bends up to exactly the right height and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it there and then bend that out this way. I've cleaned this pipe up, I've deburred the ends of the pipe and yeah, just sort of, as I say, cleaned it up uh, and test fitted it there with the new clips. That seems to be pretty snug. I can reuse that original uh, pipe there. It's just looking at this one. This seems to be very long, so I don't know, you know, maybe maybe this could be turned round more in that direction, but I mean, that doesn't really gain much to be honest because, because you just end up bending this pipe around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this pipe around here and then uh, slide it onto that tube and then that will be done. If everything, well, I say it'll be done if everything is working and all of the hoses are airtight, then that will work. something that is that breather valve in that's how my pipe snakes around the front of the engine and down into there it's actually pretty neat it doesn't knock on anything it goes into the original brackets there and there and fits quite nicely into that and that's nice and secure the only non-standard thing I've got and I'll have to look at the choke cable at some point is the choke cable um, one of you mentioned here that I've got a spring here, which I have. Yes, obviously that, that pulls um, that uh, choke cable back because it just doesn't have much, much spring otherwise. But it's probably because of this contraption here, the garage built. I mean, this has all come from, from the garage who, who uh, swapped out this Weber carb. So it's sort of, it's done, but it's not done very cleanly. So what you can see here is, is the new bracket or the bracket I got with this, and then the same bracket uh, for the original valve, which is still here, and they've sort of made up a, like a, a, a choke uh, cable bracket, and then it joins, it's horrible. God, even looking at it and showing you, it's embarrassing. But anyway, um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't got that yet, because it's actually quite a lot of work replacing the, the choke cable, because you've got to get inside the, the dashboard and stuff. Uh, which I'll have to do when I do the interior light, so maybe I'll do it then. But I don't really know how how that looks originally. So yeah, maybe one of you can tell me. I know I keep asking all these questions, but one, I'm sure one of you has the uh, has a picture somewhere or can tell me what it used to look like. 
or I can do some research on the internet. But obviously that's not, not right, which I will change at some point, but I've left it in there at the moment because the choke cable works like that. And the goal is to get it through the TIFF. So that's how it's staying. But that's installed nicely in there. It's all looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. And yeah, what have I got to do now? I have, I'll put that back down. Um, what have I got to do now? I've got to, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I've got to replay, you know, refit the fuel line, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put another one on there and make it a little bit longer, just so I can, just so it's not pulling. And then it's done, more or less, figuratively speaking. So that's everything back together. I'm going to clear up a little bit and then push it outside and get the car started, see how it runs. Well, that was weird. That is weird. It's never started like that before. Have I forgotten to put something back on? Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. That started very strangely. I'll let it warm up and see what it's like. This is weird. So if you listen to this, um, I think it's warm enough now to run without a choke. But I'll try it. If I sort of stamp on the accelerator, 
it hesitates horribly. And when it was warm, before I, before I put this uh, valve in, it didn't do that. Very strange. I mean, it sounds like it's running nicely. That is just strange. That hesitation on full throttle. Mm. One step forward, two steps back. I'll have to do the timing again, I think, and reset the carburetor now that I've put that valve in. Either that or that valve is faulty, I don't know. Maybe it just needs, maybe it just needs, um, a new diaphragm or something, I don't know. But that's very strange. I squirted some brake clean as well around the gaps of these old pipes as well. That elbow there and everything, and, and the one down there as well, and around the carburetor and nothing. It didn't affect the, uh, the idle at all, so I, I'm guessing they are uh, airtight. I'm going to leave it there for this evening. I mean, it's running okay. I, I, I'm a bit confused as to why it started so terribly uh, beforehand. Um, really very strange. So, I don't know. Let's see how it starts tomorrow.